Hello, this is my July wrap up. I'm going to talk about all of the books that I've read during July. During July I read 11 books which was a total of 4,566 pages which I'm quite happy with. I think that's pretty decent to be honest. Like I think that in terms of pages that's pretty much what I'm averaging per month. There have been months where I've read more in terms of books but like it's been a similar amount of pages so like yeah I'm really really happy with that like that's great for me. In terms of how I read them in July I read two books physically, four books on audio, four books on ebook and one book a mixture of them and that's all of the really like statistic things to go into. Oh, I didn't complete my TBR. Is anyone surprised? No. I'm going to complete a TBR this year. It started out so good I need to get back on it and I will. I will. I'm determined. But yeah, I think it's time to just talk about the books. I only own a couple of the books that I've read this month. Most of them I've read I don't own physically, so I'm not going to hold them up. I'm going to hate myself when I'm editing this, but I'm just going to insert pictures for all of them. Uh, we're currently having a heatwave in the UK, so if this is like low effort, low energy, that is why, unfortunately, this is about as much as I can do in this heat. So the very first book that I read during July was A Passing On Of Shells, 50, 50 word poems. And it was by Simon Lamb and illustrated by Chris Riddell. And it was amazing, I gave it five stars. It was very different poetry to what I normally read. It was very fun and silly and goofy and it was very like specifically about different like fun things. And honestly, like the main reason I picked it up is because I saw it was illustrated by Chris Riddell. Anything that Chris Riddell illustrates, I will pick it up if I've got the chance to. And I'm really, really glad that I did. The poetry was great in itself. Like all of these poems were 50 words and it was like 50, 50 word poems. Like it was great. But then the illustrations also really added to it. Like it was like the most interesting or the most intricate part of like each poem had been picked out to have like a big illustration of and it was either half page or full page per poem so yeah it really left a lot of room and yeah I really really liked it. I wrote down in my little review 90% of the poems were truly amazing and the other ones I still found fine and fun so yeah really really glad I read it would recommend it. Normally the poetry that I read is very like emotional and hard hitting and this wasn't that but it was like whimsical and definitely made you think so if that's the sort of poetry that you enjoy then maybe you'd like it. Then I reread Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent and I gave it four stars this is just I gave it four stars the first time I wanted to reread it before continuing on with the series I'm not gonna lie I haven't yet continued on with the series so I should really make sure I do I was so determined to read the second book during July and I, I mean I've started it I've started it so you know it's not a total failure but I did not finish it. In terms of the first one I liked it. I think we got to know our characters pretty well like it was pretty easy to follow along. The magic system was interesting. I'm intrigued enough by it. I, I don't think it's one that I'm totally sucked into but I am intrigued and it feels like it's got a lot of setup in this book. Like it, what, what we did was interesting but it feels like it was setting up for more and I'm not just ready for that more to happen. Then I read Blood and Steel, which was a very interesting book. I ended up giving it four stars. Honestly, there was one part of this book, which I don't think is in the synopsis, so I can't say, but there was one part of this book and it was just to do with why the world is the way it currently is. And it was like, this many years ago, this thing happened and therefore this thing happened and therefore things are the way they are. And that was like the setup of like a lot of the things that we're pushing against in this book the things that are going on and it was just unbelievable like I just didn't believe it like the rest of the book I really really enjoyed you know and in fantasy yeah you have to suspend your disbelief but this particular part of it and this part of this setup for the world I just didn't believe I didn't believe it happened like that I didn't believe they had worked like that I didn't believe that it would have been allowed to happen I don't know I really really struggled with it but I was intrigued I really enjoyed where it went it was interesting to follow our main character because it felt like she was a very strong person but didn't actually know that much so we got to learn a lot through her and then we also had a second main character I guess and that was Wilder and I thought it was a very good addition um but we don't learn that much about him in book one but we'll get back to that in one book's time. So next up I read Your Soul is a River. Unfortunately I only gave it three stars. This was just not a collection for me. It was fine but it didn't pack any emotional punch. 
much. Yeah, so like poetry isn't really like age rated, but I would definitely say that this is YA, but you should be aware of the content that you're going into. And then, but basically my thought was, 16, 17, 18 year old Heather probably would have got a letter out of this. Current Heather, not so much. So yeah, I get three stars. God, I need to show you this. Um, hopefully you go back in the right place. But look at this cat. How are you so cute? How are you so cute? Yeah, you. Is that where you were? Close enough. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's what I'm currently looking at right now. Let's move on to the next book. So the next book I read was Those and Ruins. This is book two in that Blood and Steel series that I was started two books ago. And I gave it three stars. I still enjoyed it. I still had a good time and I'm intrigued enough to continue. I felt reading this that both our main characters were main characters in this one rather than in the first one Wilder definitely felt like yes he was a main character but he didn't feel as much in it whereas this one it was definitely like they both felt like the main characters but then towards the end something happened that made me feel like we don't actually know them at all or maybe not them one of them I don't know I don't want to say too much yeah it kind of so the reason it's three stars is one because even though we're getting one of their perspectives we then got something that happened that was just like there's no way that we could be in that person's perspective and not know about this like this is, can't have been a reveal like I, I don't understand and then the other reason is it definitely felt like it struggled a bit from like middle book syndrome of a lot of it being to set up the next book i think the next book in this series is going to be absolutely amazing i'm so excited about it there's so much that's just like there ready to go but unfortunately book two just wasn't as good. Then I read The Day of the Triffids. I'm giving it four stars but it's like a four star classic. I don't think it's a four star that would necessarily hold up against other four stars but I did have a decent time. I did find it interesting and it definitely made me think a lot. I didn't like much about it but I don't think I was meant to. Like I didn't like our main character. I don't think we're meant to. I found it interesting because it is a classic sci-fi. If I was picking it up and it had been published this year, honestly, I probably would have DNF'd it. But a lot of the things that I didn't love were due to the age of it. And I think a lot of the things that I wish that we explored that we didn't were just due to hey, books were written back then. I really wanted to explore more of the Triffids. It's called The Day of the Triffids. And we don't really get that. But it was interesting. It was much more of, I guess, a character study. But it didn't really feel like that. I don't know. Whilst reading it, I was interested. Whenever I was stopping reading it, I definitely had a lot. To think about and I had a lot of thoughts on it but it doesn't stand out to me but in terms of the classics I've read it was pretty decent so yeah then I read Fable I've been trying to get the audiobook for Fable for ages because I don't want to buy my own copies because I personally think that the US editions are way 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 prettier than the UK editions but I don't want to pay like, loads of extra money to get the US editions so I was like I need to read it first and then decide and I gave it four stars so I'm going to read book two and then decide if I'm buying them or not but based on book one Fable pretty impressed I had a pretty good time I actually don't think I've ever read like a pirate style book before and it was really really fun I enjoyed Fable our main character I thought she was interesting there was a lot going on I didn't find it the easiest to get into especially to say it's YA there were definitely things in the first five to six chapters that I found confusing that you know were figured out but it definitely took a while um, and I really enjoyed the plot I enjoyed the I think over the two books in the series it's going to be found family vibes and it feels like we started that and I enjoyed that so yeah overall I did enjoy it it was a really good YA and I think it does stand up to like some of the other YAs like okay so I recently read Once Upon a Broken Heart and I would say it's like on par with that and that's a super popular YA Fable's one that I don't hear about as often so yeah I enjoyed it I had a fun time and I will continue on with the series okay and then the next three books that I talk about are all going to be included in the next reading vlog that come out either some of them or all of it will be in that reading vlog so let's start so the next book I read was called the fairy guild trials and this was a brand new series I read it the day it came out I finished it the day it came out I absolutely loved it I had a great time I gave it four and a half stars there were a couple of bits it just 
it wasn't quite five stars there were a couple of things that i was just like oh not quite there but i'm very excited to continue on the series probably in a year's time let's face it but i'm very very excited to continue on and although i enjoyed the plot of this one the plot was very interesting we essentially have these characters who because the king died everyone gets to compete to become like the next king but you have to go through these trials hence the fairy guild trials and the winner of the trials is like the monarch basically like that's how it's decided and it's very very interesting the plot really cool but for me it was the characters that really held this and the character development we have a main character Effia who is so interesting so cool and then we have other characters around her that are very different there's a lot going on a lot of different like fantasy creatures in this a lot of different things like i don't think anyone's i don't think anyone's human i don't think i might be wrong but like i think everyone is some sort of like fantasy um being and it's really really fun the character development is good it's really strong from like the start of the book to the end of the book there's so much growth and i've really had an amazing fantastic time and you can catch my thoughts towards the end of that one in the reading vlog that will be out next on the channel and then i also read the book of asriel in that vlog and i gave it four and a half stars again what that was so so close to being five stars i had a really good time it was a really good setup to a series i do know that this is going to be a longer series i think it's going to be seven books so i'm not too worried that it was slow but i think because it was slow i couldn't quite give it that five stars like it felt a lot like set up again one with very interesting people and with very interesting fantastical beings we follow our main character diana and i believe in i, I believe in book one it's just dual perspectives so we get the main two characters perspectives so diana and sam keel and that worked really really good I might as well just tell you now, the next book I read was The Throne of Broken Gods. I gave that four stars. That is the second book in the Book of Asriel series. And this one is named Multi-Perspective. And I do prefer the Multi-Perspective. I do think it added quite a bit. Overall, between these two books, the story was great. There's a few quotes. Um, honestly, everything I wrote down is spoilery for these two books. So I don't really feel like I can talk about them great. But I was very sucked in. I was hooked. It will definitely be, you know, I'll read book three. Book three is out. It came out recently. And I will be someone that is waiting around for the books in this series on release day, ready for them to release. It's properly hooked me. Very, very interesting. And I imagine, based on the first two books, that every book will expand the world further and further and expand what we need to do further and further. So, yeah, very, very excited. Then. The very last book that I read during July was Thief of Silver and Souls and I gave it three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. I've already picked up book two. Book two will be, honestly I was hoping to finish book two in July but I just didn't get there. I'm, I'm like 60-70% through so it'll be one of the first books I finish in August. And book one, book one, that's, that's what we're talking about. I think it could have gotten four stars rather than three and a half if I'd have gone in with like the correct expectations this is marketed everywhere as fantasy romance and honestly i don't think it should be i think it should just be fantasy like honestly in book one there's, there's basically no romance like basically none like the sprinklings you can see that things could develop somewhere but there's nothing really in there that would make me think it was a fantasy romance it is definitely a fantasy and it's a fantasy or a really strong plot it's got like a murder mystery a dark academia setting possession in a way that i've never seen possession done before like I'm, I'm sure it probably has been done that way somewhere but i personally haven't read it before and it was really fun and interesting it's not secret society but there is like secret meetings between this group and it definitely gives the vibes of that and these people are trying to solve a problem solve a mystery um bring right to the world so yeah very very interesting really want to continue on really loving the series i think it's completed i'm pretty sure the four books that are out are the only four books that are going to be out i'm pretty sure i haven't looked too deeply in it because i don't want to accidentally spoil myself but i think that's okay so yeah really excited to continue on and learn more and see where the story goes honestly so yeah that was the last book that i read during july that has been absolutely everything that i read i do really hope that you enjoyed this video i'm sorry it's a little bit more low energy but i am 
sweating so that is it from me today i really do hope you enjoyed it please do give it a like if you did subscribe down below if you'd like to see more content like this let me know in the comments what your best book of july was i'll ask that question i honestly don't know what mine is i actually don't think i could tell you it's, it's either gonna well the only five star i gave it was a passing on a shell so yeah it would be that but like that's poetry so i don't know i don't know i wouldn't normally cast poetry as my favorite book i don't think but maybe i should maybe i should the passing on the shelves was really really good after that i'll either have to pick the fairy girl trials or the book of Azrael, but i'm not sure which one i'll go for but yeah that is it from me hopefully i'll see you next time bye